over 40 years, Rabbi Noah Weinberg has been helping Jews of all backgrounds discover the wisdom and beauty of their heritage. Rabbi Noah was born and raised in New York City. He studied at Johns Hopkins and Loyola Universities and received his rabbinical ordination at the Nair Yisrael Rabbinical College in Baltimore. Today, he resides with his Rebbetzin in the heart of Jerusalem. With his trademark warmth, wisdom, and love for all people, Rabbi Noah has become everyone's rabbi, touching the hearts of Jews from all walks of life across the globe. By looking at himself naked in the mirror every once in a while, you know? Knowing that we're really small in comparison to the entire universe. Having it, loads of people come up to you and put you down and making you stand up doing nothing for all the, for the whole of daylight and not eating anything apart from bread and water and everyone telling you how small you are, how insignificant you are and you feel really low and then you, there's no place for arrogance. Don't be a Leo. Remember that we're, we go back, all of us, to the same place, and that's in the earth. You know, there are various <laughs> reasons that people get arrogant. You know, you pat yourself on the back. So, some people are arrogant, you know, because they, they happen to, uh, to be very strong, you know, very strong. All right, so, you take the most ridiculous aspect of that, you know, the most ridiculous aspect of that is that, like, um, uh, you, you want to, uh, you want, uh, I'll pick up this this plate, and I'll hold it up in my hand. I mean, you see, I, I have this power, yeah? I mean, you say, the guy's crazy. He's, he's out of his wits. I mean, thank God, yeah? Okay, so, well, did you ever have a cold, a flu, and your fever, and your, and your friend comes to visit you, and he says, you know, I never get sick. <laughs> I can go out in the cold. I never get sick. You feel like killing him? <laughs> you never get sick. Thank God, you dumbbell. This is misery. You ever eat something and you get an upset stomach and you're, you're ringing with, with pain and your friend says, you know, I can eat anything. I have a steel iron stomach. I can eat anything. It never bothers me. Yeah? You feel like killing the guy. What the heck's the matter with you? Thank God. Well, what did you do to have a cast iron stomach? But if a guy can pick up a, a car, <laughs> boy, we're impressed. Yeah? What did he do? The Almighty gave him a constitution. See, the same thing goes with intelligence. You know, intelligence people are, are a little uh, uh, a little impressed by intelligence. So, if somebody says, "Go ahead," any three-letter word, cat, any anything, you you pick it. You say the word, I'll spell it for you. I'll spell it for you. Yeah. So, you think the guy's a little wacky? You know, thank God you can spell. It. What, what's the what's the big deal? But. If a guy says, I can count till 10, <laughs> thank God, you can count till 10. But if he has, oh, I remember when I was a kid, in the Lower East Side, uh, they used to hang up, <coughs> they got a degree from elementary school, that's eight grades, and they finished eight grades. You know, in elementary school, eight grades, they had a diploma on the living room wall. They were proud. They had a diploma, yeah. Today you'd cringe if somebody saw a diploma. <laughs> but how about a high school diploma? Like today, even if you have a BA, nobody hangs it up. It's uh, but if you have a PhD, oh, mm, doctor, oh, pardon me, sir, <laughs> sir doctor, yeah. Thank God you had the time, you had the money, you had the patience, you had the intelligence. You might have gave you an opportunity. He says, "Thank God, be grateful, don't be proud." No, the same thing goes. If a fellow says, yeah, but I work like the devil. I built a business. I'm a millionaire. You know what that is? And we're impressed. When a guy says he's a millionaire, he built himself up from scratch. Ooh, very impressive. So, <laughs> he got to show you he can read and write. He can read and write. I mean, any, any word. You just spell it for him and he'll write it out. Say, thank God. But you know how much effort it took for you to learn how to read and write? Another guy says, I'll walk a straight line. You want to see me? I'll walk a straight line. I, do you know how much effort it took before you were able to walk as a kid? How many times you fell and you got up and you, <laughs> yeah, well, you say, thank God, I, I, you know, I, I, I can function. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. So this guy, 
he already accomplished big things, you know, he, he's, uh, he's, he's got a job, he's, you're doing it for yourself, thank God. So you became a millionaire, thank God. Nothing to be arrogant about, but boy, it's hard not to be arrogant if you're a millionaire, and if you're a billionaire, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> forget it, it takes a real mensch not to be arrogant, to be humble. Everything here is temporary, very, very temporary, and if you know everything is temporary, there's nothing to be arrogant about. You realize that you're not perfect, and you have faults, and you know, whatever person you think you have more than, they have something you don't have. One can avoid being arrogant by thinking about how vast this world is. There's six billion people here. Who are you? I've been trying to do that all my life. I don't know if I've succeeded much. They tell you that you should think about where you're coming from, that you've come from dust, and that you're going to end up dying and go back to dust. But the worst arrogance, the most impossible, I'm a good man. I'm a good man. I fight for, I fight for the West Bank. I fight for the underprivileged. I fight for uh, the Hamas. I fight, <laughs> I fight to kill Jews. I mean, these people are so damn arrogant that other people don't really count. I am a man of good, of, of, of meaning. I fight for the right thing. See, you, you got to look at the most ridiculous aspect of being good. Imagine you walk in one day and your friend tells you, you know, this morning, boy, did I have a fight with my evil inclination? I, 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 I wanted to cut off my nose. I had the razor in my hand and I struggled and I grabbed my hand and I fought and I back and forth and back and I got rid of it. I imagine that. I could have cut off my nose. You say, thank God, man. <laughs> thank God. Yeah. Well, did you ever hear people say, you know, I know what I like. And they're very proud of it. They know what they like. <laughs> Isn't that something? They know what they like. Don't get them wrong. Yeah. So somebody says, I do the right thing. Thank God. Be appreciative. Somehow you got on the right track. You're helping people. You're helping the underprivileged. You think you're doing the right thing. Thank God. Take pleasure in your accomplishment. Take pleasure in your talents. Take pleasure in your and your, and your good fortune in every account, take pleasure in them, don't think you're better than anybody else because of it. By having enough stuff, just enjoy what you have, you know, you don't have to wish for more. Think of what you do have um, rather than what you don't have. It's like I was giving my example about um, fixing the car, if you said to do. Um, seems like a week to go spend about a thousand dollars fixing the car, but thank God you had a thousand dollars to fix it, or probably that thousand dollars. Thank God you have the car. You can only not be jealous by truly thinking that what you have is the way it should be, and that what another person has is exactly what he or she deserves. Just appreciating what you've got, and you take pleasure in everything you have. You use what you've got, and you don't want more. You're just happy with what you've got. You use it all the time. That's Perfect. How, how can we be happy? Now, my children, I am going to give you the secret of happiness for free. Just take you five minutes. We're gonna, we, we don't have more time than that, five minutes. But I'm asking you, if I give you the secret of happiness, it's so important, please share it with others. Okay? So now, here's the secret of happiness. We're standing on the 70th floor of the Empire State Building. A guy walks in opens the window and 70 is full. And he opens the window and he's going to jump. Would you try to stop him? Everybody says, I mean, nice people say, sure, I try to stop him. So I tell him, he's eight feet tall. He weighs 500 pounds. He says, you try to stop me, you come with me. <laughs> say, okay, uh, please, my pleasure. Is there anybody you want to give regards? <laughs> you know, any messages you want to leave over? He says, I see you're a very nice and sensitive young man or young woman, yeah? And you know what? I'll give you 15 minutes to dissuade me. But before you can dissuade me, you've got to hear my sorrows. You've got to know why I am going to jump, how much I suffered. Are you ready to listen? You say, sure. He gives you 10 hours of service. You're crying your eyes out. You're ready to jump with him. I mean, this, is, this guy is unbelievable what he suffered is unimaginable. I mean, you, you can't. Finally, he turns to you and he says, okay, so you hear how much I've suffered? I don't want to suffer anymore. That's it. I, I, 
I don't want to suffer anymore. I'm going to make an end to it all. I go out the window. You got 15 minutes to dissuade me. It's a tough one. So let me suggest, you see, you say to him, tell me, my friend, if on top of all these sodas that you told me about, besides all these sodas, you went blind. You were blind. You never saw a, a, a human face. You never, you never, you, you never, children are, are playing and you don't even know what they're playing. They're laughing and you don't know what they're laughing at. You bunk into, into, into lamp poles. You, you don't know where the john is and you have to go. <laughs> how, how, I, I, would you be more miserable or less miserable? On top of all these sodas, you have this more miserable. So you'd certainly jump, for sure. So you're leaning out the window to jump, and all of a sudden there's a miracle. You can see, for the first time in your life, you can see. You see sunshine. You see trees. You see flowers. You see people, faces. You see cars. You see planes. You see the world, all of its world. I mean, it's fascinating, right? Now, would you jump just now? No, you wouldn't jump just now. You stick around in two weeks to see, yeah, it's euphoric, it's fantastic. Well, what about all these troubles? <laughs> the heck with those troubles. I can see. Then you'd be there three weeks, and you get used to seeing. You get used to seeing, so you start remembering your troubles. By the fifth week, <laughs> you jump. Yeah. So the secret of happiness is don't get used to seeing. Because if you get used to seeing, which is fantastic, he can get used to being president of the United States too, you know. When he was president, he didn't do silly things. I mean, when he was elected, he got used to it. <laughs> he lost it, yeah. You can get used to being a millionaire. You can get used to having a pool in your backyard. You can get used to having a Porsche. <laughs> you can get used to odds. You can get used to learn how not to get used to it. How not to get used to it? So. We have a custom in the Jewish people, you know, you get up in the morning, you're saying, thank God I'm alive. Don't get used to living. You're saying, thank God the Almighty gave me, I can see, appreciate. Thank God I can hear. Thank God I can move. Thank God. Appreciate the beauties of living and you won't get used to them. Being uh, un ungrateful, unsatisfied with what you already have brings upon misery and disappointment. I think if you look at what you have, then you won't be jealous of other people. It's learning to be content with whatever you have, whether it be a lot or a little. To learn to be happy with what you have. I mean, I guess if you just, you know, take a step back and realize really how much we have. I mean, we're so spoiled now. You know, you have your car and your house and your know, microwave and processed foods. You don't have to do anything. We're like the laziest people. Just everything's right at our fingertips. How could you not be happy that you have to really look at it, you know? on how to manage your time, I don't think I'm the right person to ask that question. Um, that's a bad question because I actually need someone to help me manage my time. Don't take any advice from me. I hate time, I don't know. Buy a watch. Set your watch, watch. watch. like five watch. minutes like ahead so you always think you're late. She hey, does that. Your, your time in this world is finite, so realize that every second in this world that you're wasting, it's your weight, you could be you could be achieving some, some great things, you could be achieving your goals, some things which, which not many people get to do. The first thing is understand life, time is the most precious thing that you have. That's the most precious thing. Every moment is a part of life. If life is precious, every moment is precious. So when what do you do with precious things? You you make sure that you, 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 you they don't get lost. How do you do that? You organize them, you plan ahead, you see to it that everything is taken care of, that it's used to its maximum, it's used to its maximum. And realize that that is living, that makes you a liver of life rather than a muddler through life. The best way that I manage my time is I make lots of lists with my uh, calm pilot. You should sit down, work, work out a schedule. Um, make sure to get some rest, you know, a lot. Eh, 12, 14 hours a day of sleep is good. And then you go from there. Whatever you have time for, you do. You, well, you, know, you, know, you don't do. You know, all you got is time. That's life. 
So <laughs> one way of getting on that wavelength, you see, is imagine that you're sitting on a bus from uh, uh, New York to uh, uh, Hoboken, yeah, and you see a fellow each each uh, five minutes, every five minutes, he's throwing a dollar bill out of the window. Every five minutes, he throws a dollar bill, and he likes to see the way it takes off. Yeah, <laughs> it takes off up and down, you know. <laughs> He's fascinated, you're fascinated by this character, <laughs> you know, a dollar bill, yeah, that was a five dollar bill, ma, <laughs> can't understand this, you never see this, you're going to tell it to your grandchildren, yeah. Finally, he pulls into Hoboken, and everybody's getting off the bus, and this guy, he's reaching in his pockets, and it seems he threw away his last dollar, so he turns to you and he says, pardon me, but maybe you'll lend me uh, a ten dollars I can get to my to my, to my home. I, I I don't have any money. Now, would you lend this guy any money? <laughs> this guy throws. Would you lend him any money? This guy doesn't value money. He, he can't lend him any money. So if you're sitting on a bus going anywhere and you're throwing five minutes out the window, but not five minutes, half an hour an hour, an hour and a half, that's as long as it takes you, you don't value life, so what, what good is your life? You're killing time, you're throwing life out the window. That's what you're doing, you're throwing life out the window. You don't have any value of life. So somebody says, what are you talking about? I was watching the landscape, I'm, <laughs> come on. You know, it was like a, you were watching the trees going by. <laughs> Oh boy, that was a big tree. <laughs> I saw, I saw a real, I saw a cat out there, and and and, and there was a horse. And uh, <laughs> come on, with it. you're you're wasting your time. You're wasting life. So how, what do you do with life? <laughs> That's a good question. But he's on the bus, so you take along a newspaper. Now you're doing something valuable. You're reading the news, yeah. And it takes you a whole hour and a half. You go through the whole thing backwards and forwards, and you really read that newspaper, and you know it thoroughly, and you look for every article, and if you have a Time magazine, you know, a Time magazine is only good for half an hour, so you got to read, you got to read the, do you read the uh, 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 music? <laughs> now you read music, you're stuck with this, <laughs> you read music, and then you read the, uh, a business, now you're going to read, you read every single section thoroughly. Still, you got another uh, three quarters of an hour, what are you going to do? So, uh, the obituaries, the obituaries, <laughs> you read the obituaries, yeah? Finish the obituaries, what are you going to do? The letter from the editor, did you ever read the letter from the editor? Once you do it, you never do it again. <laughs> you read the letter to, from the editor. What else? It? Letters from the readers to the editor. Oh, that's not that. Well, some of them are interesting. When you catch yourself reading the advertisements, you know that you're a poor, persecuted guy. You're in trouble. Why? Because you don't want to waste time. So what do you do? You find an excuse to waste time. But what else is there to do, my friend? What else is there to do? Live! What's living? What are you living for? What in the world are you living for? What did you do yesterday? Plan tomorrow. What is there to do? What is your problems with your wife, with your children, with your boss, with your customers? Think it over. How do you solve it? There's a thousand and one things to think about that are positive, that are meaningful. That's your job. Think through what you have to do. Now, the Jewish way is we have a an obligation to actually have a encyclopedia. We have we have we have to memorize the case headings. Love. You gotta love your family. You gotta love everybody. Okay. So now, what's it love? How do I love it? And you have that memorized. The Mishnah is memorizing the contents, not the file contents. Yeah. What information you have about life. Now you get on the bus. The first thing you do is. You open up, what is it that I have to take care of? I have to learn how to love my wife better, okay? Go through what's the definition of love? What are the virtues you've loved people for? And you work at it. 
you know, you have your computer with you all the time. The computer is your head. If you filled it up with meaningful stuff, you know, nonsense in, trash in, trash out. You fill it up with meaningful things and you memorize them and you got it. So then you have an ability to work with it. I think that like every night before you go to sleep is basically work out a schedule. And as you're going, as you're going through the day, doing your, fulfilling your schedule, realize that fine, I have a time slot for this. And if I don't do this, so fine, one thing off my list, I didn't do it, you know? Just be calm, that's the most important thing, I, I suppose, in managing, but don't be lax. I don't know, I guess the biggest thing is don't be lazy. It's so easy to be lazy. <laughs> and, um, you know, spend your time, just, yeah, don't waste your time. Well, somewhat someone once suggested to me, again, since I'm so bad at managing my own time, was make a list of every little thing you have to do, whether it's to pick up the laundry, whether it's to give the baby a bath, whether it's to run the shopping errands, or to, you know, for a huge project, to make a list of every single thing you need and check it off as you go. And um, that's supposed to help you manage your time. But I wouldn't, can't tell you because I never took the time to actually make a list. Mm. Our, our tradition, we say, organize your time. Now, always be ready for what you're going to do. You should know beforehand, every night you should make a, a list, what am I going to spend my time on tomorrow? And you should organize it step by step. What are you going to think about when you're tying, your, when you're putting on your clothes? What are you, what are you going to think about at breakfast? What are you going to think about when you go to business? What are you going to think about when you see a customer? What are you, gonna, you should have everything down and the appropriate things to think about. When you're putting on your clothes, you know, what's the appropriate thing to think about? Your schedule. When you're eating, what is the appropriate thing? The pleasures of life. All the pleasures of life. That's why we say the grace after meals. To thank the Almighty for every pleasure because you're taking pleasure now. It's sustenance, but it's pleasure. And you should be aware of all the pleasures. So you go through the day and what's appropriate. And you know that you're going to see a customer, it's appropriate that you remember uh, how, how to deal with people, what is the personality type, how do you approach him, etc. Now you have your day planned out, work your plan. You have your day planned out, work your plan. Do the most important things first and then you do the less important things after. To enjoy every minute, to see the good in everything. Try to work with a clock. Get watched. If you have any questions or any comments, 